So in the previous video, we looked at the human life cycle and how that relates to meiosis. Specifically, we stated that the production of gametes is a process that's sort of charged and sort of done through the process of meiosis. What we want to sort of finish off in terms of this life cycle um, discussion is the idea of life cycles of non-humans, let's say. And specifically, this next flowchart will just be entitled Sexual Life Cycles, just as a more general sort of view on life cycles as a whole. And um, specifically, in this situation, we're going to start off by looking at a bit of a background um, on the topic itself so that we have a good basis before we actually get into the two different types of sexual life cycles that we'll um, speak about in this video. Specifically, when we talk about a life cycle, a life cycle is very easily defined as a generation to generation sequence. So we'll say gen to gen sequence. Let me rewrite that. Generation to generation sequence of stages within an individual. So, when we look at a life cycle within any individual, within any organism, this is going to be the generation to generation sequence of stages within that individual. This is going to then sort of encompass and end with this idea of fertilization. Um, more specifically, the idea of conception, let's say. Conception is the start of life, and that start of life happens at the moment of fertilization. But once that has occurred, you're going to create what? You're going to create offspring. Offspring um, production will result but then that offspring will then continue this cycle of life. So we can sort of connect this and create a sort of cycle where we have fertilization, which is a conception moment that's going to create offspring, and that eventually that offspring will then fertilize with uh, another offspring to conceive yet another offspring. This is our life cycle that we're going to be looking at in terms of sexual life cycles. This is what's going to be going on. In addition, um, we have to make sure that we understand that fertilization and meiosis both are musts if for this uh, to ever occur, to, for sexual life cycles to occur. So fertilization and meiosis, so that's just a plus sign, plus meiosis, must absolutely occur in order for these sexual life cycles to happen. In addition, what we have to now sort of talk about are the variety of sexual life cycles that we notice. And there are many different sexual life cycles worth studying. The ones that we're going to mention are the non-human ones that you should understand. So there are a variety of sexual life cycles. Let me just rewrite that. Life cycles. And first off, we'll just sort of uh, recap what we talked about in humans. Human life cycles, humans, and let's say most other animals human slash most animals Let me rewrite that humans slash most animals um, what happens in these in this situation this sexual life cycle situation um, we have gametes and within these gametes are going to be the only cells involved during the life cycle uh, are only um, in the only haploid cells involved during the life cycle so the gametes are let's say only letter N cells in life cycle. They are the only haploid cells in life cycle. The gametes like sperm and egg are the only haploid cells within the life cycle, the sexual life cycle specifically. And in addition, humans and most animals will have no multicellular N stage, which is a haploid stage, let's say. Um, there's not going to be a stage in which whenever something is haploid within a human or an animal, most animals, it will never be multicellular. It will always be a single-celled sperm or a single-celled egg for the most part in humans and animals. But then where do we see the differences? Where do we see this variety in terms of sexual life cycles? Well, we begin to see it when we study things like plants and some algae. Let's say plants plus some, uh, some species of algae. 
are going to show us some variety, something that differs from what we see in most humans and animals. In plants and some algae, specifically, we notice something called alternation or alteration, sorry, alteration. Oh, no, sorry. It is alternation because it's alternation, excuse me, of generations. This is a process seen in plants and some algae. Specifically, this process encompasses haploid and diploid multicellular stages. Where do we see a difference between this and humans and most animals? We notice that we have haploid multicell stages. In humans and most animals, don't see that. No multicell haploid stage. We do see that in this alternation of generations seen in plants and, ge and plants in some algae. Specifically, we can sort of denote the idea of haploid and diploid multicellular stages by looking at two forms, um, two things called sporophyte and also looking at something called the gametophyte. So, the sporophyte is the multicellular diploid stage of a plant or a, or a fungi, so multicell um, 2N stage, let's say. So that covers the 2N multicell stage of this alternation of generation. We're going to alternate between multicellular diploid and multicellular haploid. That's why it's called alternation of generations. So we have a multicellular diploid stage when we are in a sporophyte sort of gamete, when we are a sporophyte. Sporophyte is just simply going to be the meio was simply going to be a structure that's going to be derived from meiosis. Um, and that meiosis will then produce haploid spores. So you start as a sporophyte, let's say, if you're a specific species of plant. You're going to undergo meiosis, and you're going to turn this diploid into haploid spores. You go from sporophyte to spores. You go from 2N sporophyte to N spores. The spores themselves don't fuse, so we'll write that down. Spores don't fuse. They don't fuse with each other. We don't have N plus N in this situation, and we don't have fertilization. So that means we don't have fertilization, but then what do we do have? What we have actually is the mitotic division of these spores. These spores, this multicellular sporophyte, will actually divide mitotically, mitotically to give us a gametophyte. And when we have a gametophyte, when we have a spore that's dividing via mitosis over and over and over again, we're going to create a gametophyte. And when we create a gametophyte, we've created not a multicellular diploid stage, but a multicell N stage. This multicell N stage is going to then going to cause this gametophyte, uh, let's say, process to begin mitosis. And through mitosis, we're going to get more gametes. So this is kind of weird. Through the process of mitosis, after we get to the gametophyte stage, we get gametes. That's why they're called gametophyte. The gametophyte stage is the multicellular haploid stage that produces, that causes, that it gets influenced, excuse me, by mitosis to give us gametes. Once we produce gametes, gametes will fuse. So what didn't fuse? Spores don't fuse. The haploid spores don't fuse, but the gametes fuse. These gametes produce via mitosis. Once they fuse, they undergo fertilization, and once they undergo fertilization, they then form a zygote. That will then continue this life cycle, this alternation of generations in this plant. Since we're running out of space, we'll actually end the video on this point and we'll finish our next video by just summarizing what happens in the other variety, let's say, of sexual life cycles. There's one more that I want to talk about. But overall, we established that sexual life cycles are generation to generation sequence of stages within an individual. And that individual is going to eventually um, going to cause this sexual life cycle will cause fertilization or conception, the conceival of an organism, specifically offspring. 
offspring will be produced, and eventually that offspring will then fertilize. And this cycle will continue over and over and over again. Two absolute musts for sexual life cycles are fertilization and meiosis. They have to have to happen. That's why we're studying this, meiosis. This process is worth studying because it governs or is a part of the governance of sexual life cycles altogether. And also, sexual life cycles come in a variety of forms. We established humans and most animals undergo this gamete um, production, and this gamete production is the only time in human and most animal life cycles, sexual life cycles, where we have haploid cells. Haploid cells, gametes, humans, most animals. That's very clear. We've established that in our previous video as well. There is no multicellular end stage. Makes sense. But where it gets a little weird is if we look at, let's say, plants or some algae. They undergo the alternation of generations. They alternate between a haploid multicellular stage and a diploid multicellular stage. In the sporophyte stage, they're multicellular diploid. In the gametophyte stage, they're multicellular haploid. All of these processes then have specific areas in which meiosis occurs and mitosis occurs. It's important to know the difference, but just understand that there is more to it than just the way that humans and most animals undergo their sexual life cycles.